Hello. Welcome to CUSA's Control Quick Starts. My name's Jeff Perkins, and I'll be your host today. Today's episode, it's going to be a good one. This one is called Deep Lua. Tables, arrays, and the loops. Oh my. Today's episode is actually part of a mini-series. Today we're going to tackle tables and arrays. In today's episode, you can expect to learn that tables are data structures that associate key value pairs. And arrays are really just special cases of tables. The key idea is that tables are the main, in fact, the only data structuring mechanism in Lua. You know who says that? I say that. But also, Roberto Yuroshalimsky. I got it right that time. The creator of Lua. With that, let's dig in and let's start our exploration of tables and arrays. Close that. And let's open this particular script. I've already zoomed in. Hopefully this is going to work out well. The first thing to know about tables is how do you make them? Here in line one, I have a very simple statement. My table is set equal to curly bracket. The curly bracket is called the table constructor. That's how you make a table. In fact, for the nerds, uh, these tables are anonymous and my table is actually an identifier that is a pointer at the table. But for our purposes, it's enough for us to think of my table is this curly bracket. And in fact, if we were to ask Lua, what kind of thing is my table? Here it is. Lua says that there is a table, which is exactly what we thought it was going to say. The big idea here is that what do we use tables for? It's a data structure and it's meant to associate keys with values. So keys, values. The keys in a Lua table can be any valid data type, meaning, um, okay, so what are the restrictions? It can be anything except for nil or not a number. Not a number, it's a very special thing. Don't worry about it for now. Um, it, it comes up if you're doing math, if you like try to divide by zero, right? That's, that's weird and you can't do that, but it's not really relevant to AV, usually. Um, what are keys usually that you will probably run into? Numbers, strings, those are probably what you're gonna run into as keys. Uh, as tables, but they could be anything they really can. Like it's even possible to have tables as the keys of tables, but that's it's kind of weird. Uh, it might melt your brain, but we're not going to do that, so don't sweat it. On the other hand, values are in the same way. They also can be any valid data type in Lua. If you happen to use nil here, then Lua just interprets it as, oh, that key has been deleted from the table, therefore it's not part of the table. Again, uh, in AV, we probably are going to largely stay away from introducing those kinds of edge cases in our scenarios, but it's real, it happens, and 1% of you are going to do it 1% of the time. And so that's all I'm going to say about that at the moment. Again, usually what are you going to run into? Values are probably going to be strings or numbers. In fact, let's, let's sort of walk through what you normally would expect. Let's turn on this particular piece of code here. And I'm going to re I'm going to save, which is going to restart the script. And so the way that we go about populating a table with key value pairs is, well, there's several different ways. The most formal way of doing it is probably like this. Uh, here we are, line 12, my table equals curly bracket. And then inside the curly bracket, we establish the first key value pair. And we have bracket, right? It's right here. Bracket, the string, key one. That's going to be our first key. And we're setting it equal to the number one. So we are associating the key, which is a string, with a value, which is a number. Okay, and also note here that I'm using the square bracket syntax. Again, I, I called this one deep Lua because we're we're kind of we're kind of swimming in the deep waters a little bit. It's we're gonna have a lot of syntax. It's just what it is. Um, 
I'm using the square bracket syntax as our method of indexing the table. So many technical words, I know, okay? Um, the second key value pair in our table is indexed at bracket the number two, and its value in this case happens to be the string that says value two. So we have a key that is a number and a value that is a string. Uh, you can do this in tables. Tables don't care. Tables are simple, simply associations of keys with values. It's key value pair. They go together. Um, so whatever you want your key to be, pretty much it's wide open, can be associated with whatever value you want it to be associated with. Again, uh, the types can be wide open. And here, right, I associated a string key with a uh, number value and a key number uh, with a string value. It, it's not a problem. Uh, and of course, if I want to print them, I can print them out. <clears throat> and this is a very common way of doing it. Again, I am indexing using the square bracket. So my table square bracket key one, notice what it does, right? When you stick the key into the table, it automatically gives you the value. So when I stick in, right, here we are. When I stick in the string key one, I get out the value one, which indeed is a number. Run it through the type function. That's all it is. Running it through the type function for it to tell me what it actually is. Because in the debug window, it's hard to know. And they all look the same. Um, <clears throat> all right, similarly, line 18, when I print key two, I get the string value to works exactly the way we think it should work. Let's keep going. Uh, as we look at tables, let's clear the debug window and let's hit save again because that just restarts the script. Let's look at line 25. Line 25 says my table dot key three equals the string value three. Here I've made use of a slightly different indexing method. This is called the dot method, and it's offered as syntactic sugar by Lua. It's kind of nice. Uh, technically, what we've done is we have created a third key value pair in the table, and we have used the string, key three, to be the key, and it's associated with the string value three. And once again, when I go to print, um, notice I can, I, can, I can index the table using the dot method, as I've done here, or by using the square bracket method. They're both valid, they both work. In fact, the square bracket method always works. There are a few restrictions on the string method and we'll be covering that very soon, okay? Uh, let's come down and let's turn on this next little piece of code and restart the script uh, as we save it. And so here we are, um, line 33, my table dot key four is a function. It has a function as a value. Now that might feel a little weird, but actually it's a very common thing to do in Lua. We can make a table that associates a string key or whatever. I mean, it could have been any key, right? It could have been four. The number four is the key. It doesn't matter, right? The point is, is that we can have tables that have functions as values. It's no problem. It's kind of neat. In fact, it's really neat. And again, it is actually really, really common. And so here we are. My table key four is uh, a function, just like I told you it was. And lastly, uh, here in this particular script, let's turn on that, do that and do that. And now let's look at sort of a last uh, sort of example of common things that you'll see as you use tables in, in Lua, in AV programming. Um, my table dot key five is, it's another table. It, this key, has a table as its value. And in fact, here we are. Square bracket string key 5.1 is value.5.1. Uh, and 
uh, key five underscore two is value five underscore two. Of course, both the keys and the values here are strings, um, as you can plainly see. And as we inspect these print statements here, what we'll notice is that, uh, you know, what we've done here, uh, I'm doing two things that we should pay attention to. One is we should pay attention to uh, the indexing methodology, right? I'm using squares and dots. Um, in line 47, I have to use the square bracket to make the index. So square bracket, key five, square bracket, key 5.1 gets me the value 5.1 that I was expecting. Um, but notice for 5.2, so five underscore two, my apologies. So my table dot key five dot five underscore two, I can make use of the dot method for indexing. So why can I use the dot method in 48, but I can't use the dot method in 47? It has to do with the fact that there's that dot in the key's name, key 5.1. If we tried to just index using the dot method, then Lua would get confused. Is it key, what does the dot mean? Right, so to <clears throat> to resolve the ambiguity about what the dot means in the string, in the key, you have to use the key as a literal string, i.e. you have to use it using the square bracket methodology. All right, <clears throat> it's real wordy, it's a little, it's a little persnickety, but this is, these are the fundamentals of using tables and how they work. So there you are, those are tables. Now let's turn the corner and let's talk about arrays for a moment. Let's roll up here to the top. <clears throat> How do we make an array? Well, basically the same way that you make a table. You know why you make an array the same way that you make a table? It's because every array is a table. They're just special cases. In the same way, right, go back to high school for a moment in your mind, go back to that geometry class and you learned all the properties of rectangles and you learned that all, oh, squares, squares are just rectangles. All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Same thing here. All arrays are tables. Not every table is an array. So what is it that makes an array special? Arrays, the thing that makes arrays special is that we choose really useful, clever keys for the arrays. Uh, specifically, we choose to use a sequence of numbers, specifically starting at one, and going one, two, three, four, dot, 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 all the way out to however many elements you need in your array. Um, that's all it means to be an array. It's a table that has a sequence of integers as their keys. Uh, also, uh, caveat here, uh, Lua starts with one because first is one. Uh, I know in other times and other places, uh, we start with zero because zero is actually like right from the computer's point of view as it's working with binary zero, 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 zero is the first uh, lowest possible value state. Uh, and so other languages start at zero, but, but not Lua. Lua is for the people. Lua starts at one. Lua counts like we do. Um, okay, cool. So how do I populate an array? The most common way, seriously, the most common way is right here in 11 through 14. You just declare my array equals curly bracket, and then you start shoving things in it. The string hello world, the number two. Um, that's almost always how we make arrays. Now, what did we actually do? This is called the implicit definition of populating arrays. Uh, because if we look at 17 through 20, line 17 through 20 right here, what we'll see is that 
Um, I have declared my array is uh, equal to curly bracket. Bracket one equals the string hello world. Bracket two equals the number two. These are the same. These two, right, my array in 11 and my array in 17 are equivalent. They, they are the same. I just, I had to type less uh, when I did it implicitly than when I did it explicitly. The point though is that they are equivalent. It's two ways to get to the same conclusion. Um, we are just implicitly saying key number one is value string hello world and key number two is value number two. They're the same, they're totally equivalent. So um, how can I, are, are there shortcuts to adding to it? You betcha, okay, line 22. Uh, this is a very common way of adding uh, key number three to my array. So my array bracket three is I'm Batman, of course, right? Um, because it's, wh why is it the string I'm Batman? Because I made the video and I wanted it to say I'm Batman because wh why, why are you asking those questions? Those are not the questions you should be asking. So lastly, of course, we can access values within the array by indexing with the keys. So here we are, print my array one, two, and three, and it prints out just exactly the way you want it. Hello world two, and I'm Batman. So with that, that's episode one of this particular mini series on tables and arrays. What did you learn today? Well, you learned, you learned quite a bit about tables and arrays, and really, Tables are the main data structure in Lua. And we're gonna get a lot more comfortable with them because as you look around, you're gonna see a lot more of them once you have eyes to see, and now you do. Okie doke, with that, I'll see you again real soon, thanks.